السلام عليكم جميعا واهلا وسهلا بكم بورشتنا اليوم عنوان الميكس ميثود ريسيرش احب ان اشكر وحده التعليم المستمر دكتوره زهراء وحده ابن سينا دكتوره سليمه وست وفاء وعماده الكليه دكتور سامد هاشم حقيقه احنا عودناكم انه نتواصل وياكم بال كل ما هو في خدمه البحوث في خدمه المهنه ايضا اليوم راح نحكي على موضوع بحثي تقريبا مو الكل يستخدمه هذا الموضوع البحثي هو مو ستريت فورورد هو يمزج بين الكوانتيتيف والكواليتيف ولذلك حقيقه هو موضوع نوعا ما معقد يحتاج لسكيلز جيده احنا اخذنا بهذا الموضوع صارنا حقيقه اكثر من 2017 عده بحوث فيه ولذلك عندنا تجربه ممكن ان نمزج بين الثيوريتيكال باك جراوند وبين البراكتس الحقيقي اللي واجهناه اثناء الدراسات اللي اجريناها So today we we'll talk about mixed method study. Mixed methods mean we mix more than one method, particularly quantitative plus qualitative. Uh, it can be used for uh, human-related research, clinical-related research, uh, medical research. Before, uh, before you conduct your study, before you start your study, you need to understand why you are conducting mixed method. يعني مو إحنا والله نسوي الميكس mixed method لأنه عجبتنا التايتل ال mixed method. ليش إحنا يعني يعني لازم قبل ما نسوي mixed method نشوف إنه هل إحنا نحتاجه حقيقة لو ما نحتاجه. لانه مرات حقيقة اذا ما نحتاجها آه انا ما افضلها كلش يعني حقيقة ليش ليش ما افضلها؟ لانه هي تايم كونسيومينج يراد لها سكيلز يراد لها خبرة يراد لها صبر ويراد لها كتابة جيدة فخلينا نكون واقعيين الميكس ميثود طريقة جيدة طريقة روبوست طريقة ممتازة بس مشكلتها تايم كونسيومينج انا اللي قدرت اعطيكم الليمتيشنز مالتها عمود بعدين مو تقولون ما قلنا التايم كونسيومينج واحتمال اذا بيبر وحدة راح تصير كلش طويلة فاحنا مرات يعني حتى من طلبة الماجستير من يسوون ميكس ميثود مرات يعني نفصلها نسويها الكوانتيتيف واحد والكواليتيتيف واحد ونسوي من عندها تو بابليكيشنز يمكن عندنا صار ثلاث بحوث سوينا المان سكريت مالتها ميكس ميثود كانت حقيقه بحوث طويله فهذا الليمتيشنز مالتها راح تقول لي زين منين جت الفكره مال ميكس ميثود؟ الفكره مال ميكس ميثود هي وين وي هاف ان اور جول از نوت ميت باي باي اونلي ون ميثود يعني وين وي هاف نيو اريا تو اكسبلور And we don't have good background, previous studies. We need to explore the area. We need to do mixed method. Start, for example, with the qualitative, then follow up with the quantitative. So those two phases could be in sequence and could be parallel. Mostly, but most of the time in sequence, mean we conduct one phase, Do the analysis, then do the second phase. So we have terminology. Terminology mean MM mean mixed method. Qual mean qualitative. Quan mean quantitative. So if it's capital letter mean, this is the major part. If it's small letter, this is the minor part. Sometimes we have one minor, one major. Sometimes we have two majors. It depends on our methodology. It depends on our goal. 
sometimes we have exploratory, the qualitative first. Other time we have explanatory, the quantitative first. So I need you to think about why I'm doing mixed method. If my question can be answered by one method, it's better than doing mixed method. But sometimes we need mixed methods, especially in a new or complicated uh, area. I will, I will give you a couple of examples in the next slides. I think not all researchers are familiar with qualitative data. Qualitative data is mean we don't have numbers. We don't deal with statistical analysis. We deal with participant. We deal with interviews. We deal with theme, sub-themes, codes, comments. So qualitative data, it's, it's really a kind of methodology. It's, uh, it's new for, for Iraqi researcher. I think not uh, not many people working with with qualitative and starting uh, in pharmacy field maybe in uh, three years ago. Uh, let's talk about qualitative because most people or most researchers are familiar with the, with the quantitative, familiar with cross-sectional study, retrospective cohort study, prospective cohort study. Uh, clinical trials, those are quantitative. But when we come to qualitative, we have a new methodology. We have a new way to collect the data. For example, we need to do interviews, focus group, observations, case studies. So we have a new methodology to collect data and recruit participants. When for example, if we take the interviews, which is one of the interview is one of the most common methods to collect qualitative data. Uh, our questions can be divided in one uh, uh, either in structure interview, semi structure, or unstructure. Structure means all we have all the questions written, and our questions just read the questions without any follow up question. It's kind of fixed question. For example, it's similar to the uh, researcher administered, administered survey. If you read the survey to the participant, this is kind of structured interview. But if you have the flexibility to follow up question, for example, if you ask the, uh, the provider, do you have experience with biological medications? They will tell you yes. Could you please give me some example? This is follow-up question. Do you have any challenges? How long have you been with experience? So this is called semi structure because it, you have the, the flexibility to, to ask some questions. When it comes to the structures interview, you don't have set of interview guide. You come to the interview with single question. For example, tell me your experience with biological medications. And the interview will, will, will progress without having structure, you have, without having set of questions. Most commonly use semi structure because we prefer have guideline, uh, interview guide. At the same time, we have the flexibility. So semi structure will give you flexibility, will give you some questions to start with. So those methodology or those tools, interviews, can be used to collect qualitative data. So most of the part of this lecture, I will talk about qualitative phase or qualitative part, because we said it's mixed method, qualitative, quantitative. Which one is, is the first? It depends on your question and your uh, goal. So 
So we have three methodology most commonly used some instruction interviews. And how many interviews do you need to conduct? We don't have sample size calculation in qualitative study. I'm talking about qualitative study here. So in quantitative, we have sample size calculations. We can get the N from sample size calculator, online calculator. But uh, in the qualitative, we don't have sample size calculator. We can do or conduct interviews until we reach saturation point. Saturation points means when there is no new information get with the new interviews. We conduct interviews on the, the same answers repeated again and again. So in the interviews, we don't have sample size calculation. We stop when we reach saturation point. You need to think about where you are going to conduct interviews. When do you have quiet place? Can you record? Can you, can you talk privately? You need to think about these details before you go to the participant and meet them. You need to, to make deal with them. I will interview you in your office in the hospital. Do, do we have private place? Think about these details before you go and conduct your interviews. And most of the time we rely on audio recording. That's mean you have recorder, audio recorder, and you need to ask permission from your participant if you can record. Sometimes you cannot get permission. If you cannot get permission to record, you have to write the answers like uh, written. You need to write those answers because Iraqi participants, sometimes they feel uncomfortable about answering everything uh, with recording, especially for sensitive topics. So you have no choice other than, I know it's, it's not preferable, the preferable one, the ideal one is to record because recording it's available and you can go back to the recording and write, or we call it transcribe, transcribe writing every single um, word and generate uh, themes, quotes, sub theme. So let's try to record first. Let's put our efforts to convince the participant to agree to give approval for the audio recording. Because if you don't record, Sometimes you don't have the skills to write fast and you will miss so many details. So the first choice is to record. Uh, it's okay and it's better to have some notes even you are recording. But the, my advice is you need to focus, make eye contact with the interviews. You are the interviewer the participant is interviewees. You need to make eye contact with the interviewee. So you can say, and you need to be neutral during the interview. You cannot put your opinion. You cannot say, right, yes, I agree with you. I have such experience. No, no, don't be biased. You need to be neutral and don't give your opinion. You, you only need to listen and say, okay, okay. And if you have follow-up questions. So interviews is number one, most commonly used method to collect data, qualitative data. Second common method, we call it focus group. Interview usually with one person, we call it one-to-one. -one. But focus group, usually the, the interviewer with four to 12 participants. It depends. 
So focus group, focus group, for example, you went to partner company and you need, you don't have time, you only have two hours to do your interviews. You cannot meet them one-to-one -one in two hours because there are 10 pharmacists. I suggest you have focus group, put them in one room and you sit in the round table and try to ask them in sequence, one by one. The good things about focus group, people that can have discussion within the same group. Once they say, yes, I have such events, such experience last year, and they say, yes, I have this also. And they will start to discuss, and you, have, you are listening, you are recording. But the limitation is when you have employer and employees, when you have the boss, sometimes the employees, they cannot talk freely, or frankly. They could be afraid from, you know, hierarchy. They start to be silent. They, 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 they could be silent. So focus group is really helpful, but you need to be careful who, who is in focus group. If they are colleagues, same level of authority, that's fine. But you cannot put, for example, the director with employees in the same focus group. In this way, they will not talk because they're afraid from their boss is looking at them. So the steps of conducting focus group, focus group, it really needs good skills. Even for the interview, you always to have control your participant, how you control them. You don't want them to go outside the topic. Sometimes they go outside the topic, outside the scope of your question. You need to bring them back. For example, you ask them about biosimilar and they will go and talk about generic medication. Then you say, let's, let's focus on the, on the biosimilar. And Nicely, you need to do this nicely and smoothly. And you need to bring water for them. You need to have quiet place as possible, as possible. Some of my students, they say, we don't have quiet place. Sometimes we interview them in the hospital pharmacy, which is really noisy one. When I listen to the recording, I have interruptions and in some people come uh, inside the room. And it's better to give them the interview guide before you conduct your interviews or focus group because it's better to, to prepare their answer. I don't want to uh, have some surprise questions because they may not be able to, to answer. So it's okay, it's better to give them the interview guide so they can prepare answers. A mind structure means they are not closed ended questions. They are open ended questions. For example, how do you think about biosimilar? Tell me about the time when you dispense biosimilar. Describe your interaction with physician regarding biosimilar. What do you attribute this experience with biosimilar? What might be example of the biosimilar you dispense? So open-ended question, not the answer is not yes or no. The question is, I need the, the participant to give me uh, their experience in open way. I like the qualitative part because sometimes our questions cannot be answered quantitatively. For example, in 2020, I have high diploma student, and we explored the pharmaceutical company representative experience with substandard falsified medications. Subst as you know, substandard falsified medication topic in Iraq is really tricky and have so many you know, uh, reasons and uh, multi-disciplinary uh, uh, factors in influencing this topic. So before we conducted the survey, we did interviews. And the interviews sometimes bring you information. We call it in-depth because you are listening. Uh, the, the, 
the survey questions available online, for example, available for Malaysian people or for people in the UK or people in the US, they, they may not fit our Iraqi environment, our Iraqi situation. So sometimes you need to listen to customize questions according to our situations, according to our drug uh, drug stores, about the sequence, about key media, about private sector, public sectors, about testing, about uh, why we, we have shortage in medications, about registration. So we have so many, uh, you know, uh, different uh, related or uh, factors. Interviews can give you rich information. That's why I started to, to conduct, and I, I, I had one mixed method in the US 2016, the second one in, uh, in 2019, the third one in 2020. Then I started to conduct this uh, mixed method almost yearly. There, there is a mixed method research uh, yearly either with other researcher or with my master's students or postgraduate students. So in the, at the, at the University of Baghdad College of Pharmacy, I prefer to give this topic mixed method. Sometimes, unfortunately, we don't have time. So I, I try to make this webinars for our uh, the postgraduate graduate students in the in the clinical pharmacy discipline because this topic is not familiar in in uh, postgraduate studies in Iraq and uh, people usually don't teach it i i try to teach it to our students and it's essential for anyone who has planned to conduct either mixed method or qualitative method so start the questions with who what when where don't answer, do you have it or not? Do you, do you agree or not? Because I don't want the answer to be yes, agree. No, disagree. I don't want short answer. I need open-ended answer. So you usually go to the interviews focus group and you have your interview guide. The interview guide, these answer could come from the literature. You could come from your experience or mix of, from the literature and experience. As always, I tell my students, please conduct, please do your homework before you go to the field. Please do literature review, conduct literature review to collect the possible, the potential questions you can get from the literature. So the literature will give you the I, new ideas, which questions you could miss if you don't go to the literature. So please go to the literature and search for similar topic. Search for quantitative study. That's fine. Every study is helpful. You can read the, the previous survey in the US, in the Malaysia, in the whatever. You can use them. And it's better to have pilot study. It's better to also validate them by sending them to the expert in the field. But, uh, we need to validate them to see if the, they are applicable to Iraqi environment. Sometimes the terminology are not appropriate. Sometimes we need to translate them to, to Arabic if the interviews are conducted with general population, with, with healthcare workers who cannot understand English. So to be honest, uh, not all uh, Iraqi healthcare providers can understand English. So sometimes we have to translate the questions. We need to accept Arabic answers, but we need to be careful about translate those Arabic answers to English later on, because you know uh, sometimes we have slang, Iraqi slang. We need to translate it to uh, formal Arabic, then translate formal Arabic to to English. So may have three steps. You know, Google Google Translate, if you need to use it, they will not work with Iraqi slang. So Iraqi slangs, 
convert you to Arabic, formal Arabic, formal Arabic. We'll use Google Translate to convert it to English. And you need to check after uh, Google uh, Translate because, you know, sometimes they don't give you the, the actual word. You need to think about you need to think about the time of the interviews because, for example, the physician during the day, the, the daily work, they are very busy. And you cannot take more than 20 minutes or 15 minutes. So to be realistic, you need to focus on the major questions, most important questions. Because physician, they are sitting in the outpatient clinic in the hospital, and you come and you need to conduct interviews, they say, we don't have time, please be short. So please be short, be fast. So if we come to the type of sampling, as we know for the quantitative sampling, we may have probability sampling. Probability mean randomized sampling, which is the standard, golden standard. Could be simple randomization, systematic randomization, stratified cluster. Mostly for qualitative, <clears throat> we cannot use randomization because we have small sample size. We cannot do. The main limitation, I don't call it limitation, but it's the main difference between quantitative and qualitative. Qualitative, usually we have small sample qualitatively because you cannot interview large number of people because we need to transcribe their word, those transcription, you need to read them thoroughly, you need to generate theme, sub-theme, it's really time consuming. So, so we always have larger sample size in quantitative studies compared to qualitative studies. The most common met sampling methods for qualitative could be convenient sampling, uh, snowballing, and purposive. I like purposive sampling, which which is mean mean purposive mean we have it we have it here in the corner and the in the uh, left down one. I select the most experienced people in the field. I know the pharmacist with experience at least three years in the field can answer my questions in depth. I don't want to bring someone who has only graduated six months ago and ask them about their experience in the community pharmacy. They have no idea or they have very short vision. So I need people who are experts in the field so I can get as much information as I, uh, as, uh, I need from them. I don't want people with no experience or with little experience. So please be careful about targeting people who are expert in the field, we call it purposing. Sometimes we need to use snowballing. Snowballing means after I finish with this participant, I was I, I will ask him, please, could you refer me to to any of your colleagues who have who, who has expert in in this topic, and you uh, uh, he he may uh, uh, agree to participate. They say sure. Check Dr. Ali. Check Dr. Hussein. Check Dr. Ria, for example. So they can refer you to other participants. We call the snowballing, which is a start small, then with the, with the time become bigger. The purpose of sampling is really common to select the most expert people in the field who can answer my questions appropriately. So purpose of sampling, you need to uh, check the potential participant. And you need to put an inclusion criteria. At least three, for example, they work in this field, they work in this area, they dispense biosimilar, they work uh, in hospital with biosimilars. So you are, you, are, you are asking them about biosimilar. They should have experience in biosimilar. Otherwise, they have no idea about biosimilar. They cannot answer your question. The the main challenge in the qualitative studies is, is uh, data analysis. Data analysis is different than statistical analysis. 
usually in the quantitative study, you are familiar with statistical analysis, chi-square, t-test, regression, correlation, and over. So we are familiar with the quantitative. But when you come to the qualitative, thematic analysis, content analysis, grounded theory, how can we analyze text, analyze sentences, analyze words? We don't have uh, numbers in this area. Sometimes we put numbers, but those numbers, we don't rely on numbers here. We rely on the common theme, what people agree on. So the most common method use thematic analysis. Content analysis give, give us numbers and frequency, and it's mostly common used. For example, if you search Facebook responses, you can count how many people answer this way, how many people answer this way. But thematic analysis usually starts from, with scratch. You mean we read and read our text, the question, the answer of all the participants for question two, for question one, and try to come up with common theme to understand why uh, their opinion. We need to put the, the common theme first and less common theme later. Content analysis usually rely when we have written things and we try to count the number of words appear in this text. Social media, and you need to count how many, for example, five similar words appear in this text. If we have chat between healthcare providers, we need to count how many types the, the word biosimilar appear in the text. Let's go back to the thematic analysis, which is the most common way of uh, data analysis. We start with coding. Coding means we need to give words to this text. We, we ask, tell me your perception about the safety of biosimilar your experience with the safety of biosimilar. For example, I would say, it's quite safe. I'm, I'm a pharmacist, I'm working with biosimilar. They are really safe. They are exactly similar to the reference. So they have adverse directions comparable to the, this is just example about the answer, comparable to the reference or originator. If all the participants or most of them, they give the similar answer, so you come up with theme called biosimilars have comparable safety compared to the originator. This is the theme. Because most participants agreed on comparable. Some Sometimes they use comparable, sometimes they use similar, sometimes they say, same exactly one. <clears throat> All these are similar words. So we need to use our terminology. For example, comparable could be, we use code called comparable. They don't use it. I can use it. They, they call it, for example, similar. They call it same. I will use code called comparable, for example. Compile the answers. I can highlight the similar ones. I try to come up with common theme the majority of participants agree on. So thematic analysis is time consuming because before you conduct your thematic analysis, you have to have, you have to have uh, some previous steps. First of all, you need to transcribe the recording to the written. Convert, record to written. Everything in words. Sometimes if, if the interview in Arabic, you need to translate to English. Then you need to read and read 
this content again and again to be familiar with the with the with the written. I don't prefer you decide from the first time because you need to read all the answer for question one and try to highlight the similar one. For example, the the participant who said uh, similar, I put yellow or green. If they say this difference, I can put red, whatever the color you are comfort comfortable with. But and sometimes you can use soft software to help you. I'm not familiar with using software because I usually do it this by myself. Uh, do, uh, like I put the text in Excel and read again and again. So it depends. And some, and it's better to have more than one expert doing this. So we have theme, we have sub theme, and for each sub theme, you need to give example, text, quote, representative one. I will give you some example. You need to read sentence by sentence, read the whole text, put code, agree, and if you are two, you need to agree on themes and sub -theme. Or you can read line by line, sentence by sentence, the whole document. And you can do this Excel sheet, or you can do it manually. It depends if you are comfortable with either one. I need to emphasize on the different terminology used for, for qualitative data. So basically, I'm talking about qualitative data because people are not familiar with qualitative. So you cannot use the same terminology. You we use it for sorry for quantitative. For example, in the quantitative, we have internal validity. In, in uh, qualitative, we call it credibility. Quantitative, we use term external validity, and qualitative, we use transferability. Quantitative, we use reliability, and qualitative, we use dependability, objectivity, confirmability. So please be careful about using the same terminology from quantitative, because the people <laughs> from qualitative idea, they will recognize you are misusing those words. We always need validation, transferability. We need to send it to the expert uh, panel to check it for us. We need to do pilot study. We need to co conduct literature review. So we always need to have, and it's better to have, so you will ask me why we need to conduct mixed method. I said, if it's new topic, we need to explore it. Sometimes mixed method, it's helpful to triangulate data. Triangulates mean I brought the idea or the answer from interviewees and the participant in the survey. So information from pharmaceutical company representative, information from pharmacists, try to triangulate them they will give new robust results. So from more than one perspective, different data, triangulate them. So give me more robust results, I, I said. Sometimes quantitative is inadequate. It's a new topic. So you need to decide, do you need to do sequential? one after one, or it's okay to, to do parallel. Sequential is time consuming because you have to have conduct phase one, do analysis, use the analysis for phase two. If you don't, if your phase two doesn't rely on phase one results, so you can do, do them parallel. But if you're, for example, 
I need to do interviews, analyze the data, use the data to generate surveys. So you have to have phase one, the first, do analysis, conduct phase two. So it's time consuming, but you have no choice. If, if you can do it parallel, that means they are not rely on each other. It could be faster. So most of them sequential, in the sequential we use this plus sign, for example. Uh, so Sorry, for concurrent, we use a plus sign. For sequential, we use this accelimulation sign. So we have this qualitative and capital letter, mean it's the major part, and small letter is the smaller part or minor part. So if they are dependent on each other or not, dependent or independent, it depends on your faces. Point of integration. Usually mixed method, we may have different section of method. You have quantitative method, you have qualitative method. You don't mix them. And the results are the same thing. You can have your qualitative results you have quantitative results, you don't mix them. But you must integrate them in one part, which is the most important part in the discussion. When you try to explain the answers of your participant, you have to remind the readers, you have two types of participants, you have two types of methodology. You usually say both parts, interviews and participant agreed or they they didn't agree or whatever the results so remind the remind the, the readers about your participant from qualitative part and from quantitative part you need to mix those in discussion so discussion section is the most important one in this because you need to be careful about how can you handle uh, the disagreement or the agreement between the results of the two phases. For example, both participants from the interviews and survey agreed on the safety or comparable safety of biosimilar with the originator. This is if you have agreement. If you don't have agreement, you, you, you need to explain. So, I, th I think you need to spend time in your discussion more than the regular discussion section. We have terminology, for example, qualitative plus quantitative. They are concurrent. Those are both major because both in capital letter. Qualitative, quantitative, one is minor, one is major. One here, the quantitative is the major, the third one. So it depends on your which one is the major? Which one is the major? You need to, for is this, this one qualitative is the major. Here, qualitative is the major, but it's the second one. Here they are, they both are major at the same time. Here, both are major, but they are in sequential. So you need to choose either they are concomitant or sequential, which one is major, which one is minor? For example, at the University of Iowa, we conducted survey and we had open-ended question at the end of survey. We had we had answer to the uh, to this open-ended questions. Our main part was the qu quantitative, and we have this small part qualitative. So it was quan qual, and we conduct the survey. Uh, we conduct the analysis at the same time. So we use plus, so quan plus qual, the small one. Convergent, they, they are at the same time, they are independent. You do interviews with uh, Iraqi pharmaceutical country uh, manufacturers, and you do survey for the patient. If you start with interviews or, quali or qualitative phase, we call it explanatory, uh, sorry, exploratory. 
exploratory comes from explore. You explore with interviews with the qualitative. Then convert these theme into survey questions. Try to generalize the finding of phase one, quanti qualitative, in the survey. Called exploring mixed method, exploratory. If you start with the quantitative, if you start with survey, we call it, and you, you have the answer from the survey, and you need explanation to your why Iraqi patients, they don't request Iraqi pharmaceutical product. We need explanation. Why our pharmacies, they don't promote Iraqi or national products. They promote European product, but they don't promote for national product. Why Iraqi patients don't request national pharmaceutical products first? We had these questions and brought those questions to the uh, directors or to the uh, people representative of Iraqi pharmaceutical companies or Iraqi manufact pharmaceutical manufacturers. We asked them these questions and they give us explanation of these answers. Sometimes we call it explanatory. We need to explain our results. So either we have concomitant or we have sequential. It depends. It depends on your goal. If you have, if one phase rely on the other, we need to do sequential. If we can, if they are independent, we can do those in parallel way. One, one of our uh, uh, publication, the first one, mixed method. I conducted this in 2016-17, and it was published in the uh, American Journal of Pharmaceutical Education in 2019. Quantitative and qualitative factors associated with social isolation among graduate and professional health science students at the University of Iowa with Mary Ray, the Dean Assistant. We have this survey and we have at the end of survey open-ended questions and we have to have a qualitative part. So we conduct this um, parallel concurrent and we didn't call it mixed method at that time. We said qualitative quantitative, but practically it's mixed method. For example, risk factors. We have the theme, we have the sub-theme, we have the code. So the theme, for example, feeling different from peers, the, the participant or the student feeling different from peers, either different in behavior or if it's international students or minority group or non-traditional students or... So this theme, could include any of those sub theme. For each sub theme, you need to give code. This code is representative. The best code you have, the best, for example, uh, for example, here, for uh, non traditional students. Since I'm non traditional graduate students, I often feel like I don't identify with what the students around me are talking about, like what they did on the weekend or the troubles they are having with their roommate. So this students feel different, feel non-traditional for some reason. After this, I prefer to generate diagram table to summarize our theme Risk factor, we call, for example, individual factor, interpersonal factor, community factor, organized. And within each of those, we have sub team. Within personal, individual, we have personality, we have employment. For interpersonal, we have faculty, student relationship, competitiveness. So I prefer having summary. So I don't want to talk so much about the text, text, text. You need to visualize something to your audience to make 
them easier to comprehend. So embedded means you have the large, the large, uh, for example, the quantitative, and you have small parts of qualitative, and it's part of it. Multi-phase, you have to have phase one finished as we conducted with uh, Iraqi pharmaceutical company. Uh, we have first part and we analyze the first part. Then we uh, conduct the second part, rely on the first part. So concurrent mean at the same time, uh, sequential mean one after one, I have to move faster. Uh, there is a book, we call it uh, Mixed Method Book by Clark and Braun. I like it. I will give you uh, this uh, book right now. So this one is really helpful if you can find uh, a soft copy of this book. I have the hard copy. So uh, this book is really helpful. It's uh, by uh, Chris Wall and Clark. Uh, this one, it, it, you have chapters of it. If you are planning to co conduct mixed method, please go and read these chapters. And uh, before you conduct mix, mixed method, you have to be expert and familiar with qualitative. So mixed method means qualitative plus quantitative. I know most of our students and colleagues, they are expert in quantitative, but you cannot do mixed method and you don't have experience in qualitative. But that's why I spend most of the time talking about the qualitative. So uh, please be familiar with the qualitative. I have the hard copy also about the qualitative. I will give you this book here again. If you have, if you need to read about qualitative, please try to find soft copy of qualitative. This one is really helpful and it's short by Miriam. Those are all I brought them from the university, from uh, University of Iowa. I bought them from the library there. Uh, you can find them in Amazon or other uh, uh, like uh, selling uh, websites. I think we are uh, almost done. And uh, let's uh, try to summarize. Uh, I have this, uh, this is my, I'm not sure, Doctora, could you please post the Doctora Salima, the Warqat al Hudur, the attendance form? So, uh, my, my research with uh, Mina and Dr. Manal about epidemics of standard falsified medication in Iraq. Uh, we interviewed pharmaceutical company representative. We took the results of phase one qualitative, generate questions, survey questions. Then we, we survey the participant, the community pharmacist. We try to generalize the results. We cannot generalize the findings of qualitative. They are small sample size. So we need to generalize. يعني ايش قد نريد نحصل 60 بيرس بارتسيبنت ما نقدر نحصل جزء اكثر 60 كوز شوي اصلا. So we have theme, we have sub theme, and we have representative course. This is the traditional way of doing uh, thematic analysis. This article is really long because it's mixed method. And one of the reviewers told me, it is torturing long because, because it contains qualitative, quantitative tables, codes. 
this is the other study conducted with Dr. Kauter and Dr. Mohammed Kamel, Dr. Shab, about determinant factors of national drug product acceptance. We interviewed, uh, we did survey about the acceptance of pharmacists and patients with Iraqi products. And we took the results to the representative of Iraqi manufacturers. We asked them why the people don't like or don't request Iraqi product, for example. We got the answer. Same thing, same thing here. And you can have tools. Uh, for, for example, the do's or other software to help you. I'm not familiar with using software. <clears throat> I usually do it by myself in traditional way. And uh, we open the question. Uh, please. Uh, Feel free to ask questions. If you have any questions, you can open the Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? Hello, how are you? Thank you. Allah is welcome. In the case, as you said, the most challenging is the transition of the audio code to a little bit. And we have to use it in terms of the language and the Arabic and the English. So, you know that there is no longer a program for the moment that is able to change anything that is not unique for you, but it is clear to you. So, is it possible that you عفوا اسف هل من الممكن الاستخدام بالنسبه ان نستخدم اوبن اند كويستشن بس نخليه ريتن يعني هو نفسه بالنسبه له يعني هوايه من الاطباء اللي اجريت وياهم قال لي انت ليش ما تجيب لنا كويستشن حتى الاوبن اند واحنا نكتب فقلت له يعني لا احنا نريد اوديو كود لانه حقيقه ما اعرف هل يجوز لو ما يجوز هاي وحده كم عندك كم ساعه تفضل السؤال الثاني العفو بالنسبه له احيانا يعني الشخص بالنسبه للاكسبيرينس انت قلت ثلاث سنوات او خمسه او كذا احيانا مثلا فشخص مثلا يجوز سنه او سنتين بس هو الانترستد بالموضوع يعني هو اللي ابوينتد من قبل المؤسسه او من قبل المنظمه اللي احنا جايين عليها فما اعرف هذا هل يضر بالنسبه له او لا وشكرا جزيلا خلينا نبدا بالسؤال الثاني السؤال الثاني بالنسبة لل للاكسبيرينس انت انت تحددها انت هو بيربس اوف سامبلنج فاني بعطيك مثال على ثلاث سنوات انت اذا تعتقد انه سنتين كافي واذا اذا هو سنتين هو ده يشتغل مثلا انت تريد تسوي مقابله ويا البيرسون كوميتي مال المستشفى مثلا جماعه المشتريات هو صار له بالمشتريات سنتين هو يعرفها كلها بعد ما يحتاج ثلاث سنين او صار له سنه مجرب كل شيء فقضيه البيربس اوف سامبلنج منو الانسب للسامبلنج انت تقررها طبعا مع المشرف ومع الكو اوثرز مع الادفايزرز بس تختار عندك اكسبيرينس بالموضوع يعني وات ايفر انه وذر هي سنه وذر سنتين اساتذتنا ممكن تكتبوا يمكن اسمائكم بالتشات اذا ما راح تطلع الورقه مال الحضور خلينا نشوف او اسوي لكم ورقه حضور هسه يمكن على السريع وحده دكتورة سليمة عيني السلام عليكم حسن ارجع لك ثواني يعني عليكم السلام دكتور علي راح اسوي انا اسوي ورقة حضور مؤقتة راح اسوي ورقة حضور من يمي وبعد أيوة ذلك لان جاي اتصل بها ما جاي ترد مو مشكلة انت سويها سوي علي الزحمة اوكي اوكي ماشي لحظات نرجع للسؤال مال حسن انه اتفق وياك بالنسبة للاكسبيرينس انت تتحكم بها ماشي عيني هاي خلصنا من عندك سؤالك الاول كان بخصوص تحويل التكست آه يعني انت اولا لازم ترجمه للعربي الفصيح او تحاول عربي فصيح وبعدين تستخدم جوجل ترانسليت تحول العربي الفصيح للانجليزي المشكله بال بالانجليزي آه بالجوجل ترانسليت العفو مشكلته انه اساتذه ان شاء الله هسه دكتوره سليمه راح تنزل لنا الفورم فيعني راح نسجل حضور ان شاء الله يعني قصدي ما يحتاج انتم تكتبون على هذا هسه المفروض راح تنزل لكم جوجل فورم 
على ما تكون شغلة يعني أرتب شوي عملية طويلة صحيح بس صدقني صدقني حسنا نجربها يعني أنت كل ما تقرأ طبعا أنت أول شيء لازم تسمع أول شيء تسمع إذا عندك مجال تسمع أكثر من مرة خير على خير بالنسبة لي يعني أنا دا أسمع مرة واحدة ريكوردينج ودا أسجل طبعا اغلب بالوقت هو عمليه تحويل او احنا نسوي ترانسكرايبنج ترانسكرايبنج الاوديو الى ريتن هاي العمليه حقيقه هي الموست تايم كونسيومينج زين صدقني انت من تسمع راح تصير عندك معلومات ريتش اكثر يعني انت يعني انا ليش احب استخدم مثلا اكسل شيت الطبيعي اقرا اسمع واقرا اقرا انت كل ما تقرا وكل ما تسمع راح تصير عندك فكره اوضح على الثيم يعني حتصير عندك حتى حتى من يطلع الثيم مالتك الثيم اللي هو الكمان ايديا البيبل متفقين عليها ماجوريتي متفقين عليها راح تطلع مرتبه راح تطلع بعمق بينما انت اذا ما راح تقراها زين وما تسمعها زين وتسوي كل شيء شفيان شاف وسرعه يصير عندك الحكي فرجمنتد احنا ما نريده فرجمنتد طبعا تدري ليش؟ لان يعني القارئ مالتك انت لازم بالاخير القارئ مالتك يعني هسه من سوينا البحث ويا دكتوره يمكن خلي اشوف لكم اياها انا آه... سويت شير لو لا اعتقد آه... هنا خلينا نرجع يعني اذا تنتبه خلي اشوفه كله يعني القارئ مالتك ترى ترى هم انا يجوز ما عنده وقت واكيد ما عنده وقت ويريد تختصر له الموضوع يعني هو بالنسبه له مو فاميلير ويا الموضوع فانت مال تقول لي تعدد له عدد صفحات و13 صفحه وانا حيصير بورنج يعني هذا البحث مال دكتوره ميري اللي اشتغلت وياها اذا تنتبه سوينا هذا الفيجر هذا الفيجر يعني حقيقه اختصر كثير من الكلام ويعني يعني هنا انا بس تريد تعرف الريسك فاكتور مال السوشيال ايزوليشن قسمناها انتر بيرسونال واندفيدجوال اورجانيزيشن وكوميونيتي وكل وحده انطيناها صب ثيم القارئ يباوع على هذا الفيجر يفتهم القصه كلها فانت لا تروح بالديتيلز بدون ما مت... يعني حاول على طول at the end of the day summarize your findings تعلموا على summarizing طلابنا الاعزاء باحثينا الاعزاء زملائنا الاعزاء يعني summarizing حتى لو بغير اختصاص انت باي اختصاص القارئ يريد take home message اعطيه figure اعطيه visual table اعطيه flow chart لانه القارئ مرات يتيه وما عنده وقت ويريد فد صفحه واحده تلخص له الابستراكت ليش يحبوه الابستراكت ملخص فانت تصرف وقت ب... انا اقول لك يا تايم كونسيومينج خاصه الكواليتيتيف تايم ولذلك احنا مرات طلابنا نقول لهم يعني بي كيرفول انت من تروح على الكواليتيتيف يرى لك اكسبيرينس المشرف مالتك يرى لك اكسبيرينس اللي يقرا لك يرى لك اكسبيرينس لانه اذا اجى مناقش بالط... بال بال بالثيسيس ديفنس مالتك عندك اكسبيرينس بالكواليتيتيف وانت والمشرف ما عندكم مثلا اكسبيرينس بالكواليتيتيف بعطي مثال احتمال يطلع لكم نواقص قويه او 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 فد فلو قويه فرجاء يعني بي كيف ان شاء الله اكون جاوبت على اسئلتك خلينا نشوف اعتقد عندنا بتشارت اكثر من سؤال هنا انا اهلا وسهلا دكتور محمد العدول شكرا لكلماتك الجميله اعتقد شفت هنا السؤال كان يقول بالشات شنو السؤال بالشات هنا ما اتذكر اذا عنده اي احد عنده سؤال انا حاضر على الاجابه ها آه هنا سؤال من دكتور احمد منصور الزبيدي شكرا جزيلا آه ها دايريد سلسله من كواليتي كوميكس ميثود والله حقيقه هو شكرا للتعليم المستمر احنا احنا مرات نحتاج نسجل المحاضره من يعني قصدي هاي المحاضره يمكن نسجلها من العام الماضي ورافعها للجامعه 
فعملية تسجيل محاضرات جديدة شوية يراد لها فد سيكونس وابروفال يعني ان شاء الله احنا احنا نحاول نعطيها ويبينار ونحاول مرات نعطيها احمد جليهاوي يقول شكرا جزيلا بخصوص التيماتيك نحتاج بصراحة ورشة عن طريق عمل الاحصائيات الخاصة بالنتائج بالنسبة للثيماتيك أناليسز مرات طبعا غالبا الأفضل أنه أنت ما تبدي بثيرتيكال فريم وورك غالبا تعتمد على النتائج اللي عندك إذا اعتمدت على ثيرتيكال فريم وورك معناها أنت مقرر النتائج مالتك مسبقا أنت ممكن ترتبها ها دكتور غازي يعني تفضل دكتور شكرا جزيلا السلام عليكم دكتور نغالي شلون الصحه؟ شكرا جزيلا ممنون لك والف شكر على هذه المحاضره الرائعه. دكتور علي لو سمحت لي سؤال بسيط ان شاء الله قد يكون يعني موضوع فكره لك بالمستقبل لانه اختصاصك هذا زياده اعداد الصيادله هل تنعكس هذه على زياده مصداقيه الصيدلي وثقه الطبيب ب يعني هنا راح تاخذ زياده الاعداد هي ككوانتيتيف والثقه كواليتيتيف اذا صح هذا الفكره اذا صحت هاي الفكره اي نوع من السامبلنج هل يكون نوع السامبلنج هو اللي يحدد النتيجه مسبقا لانه جنابه قلت اكو اربع طرق للسامبلنج ذكرتها اعتقد لربما مثل التحاليل الاحصائيه المتحلل الكوانتيتيف قد يكون الاختيار النوع الاجدر من السامبلنج قد يؤدي الى تغير في النتيجة هل تعتقد هذا صحيح دكتور علي شكرا جزيلا مرة ثانية شكرا جزيلا دكتور نغالي آه... 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 أنا من أقول السامبلنج آه... السامبلنج الأقصد به أنه أنا آه... لازم أختار أشخاص يشاركون عندي بالبحث مالتي بما انه عدد الاشخاص اللي حيشاركون ببحث الكو... طبعا زملائنا الاعزاء الحضور شكرا لحضوركم بالنسبه للرابط مال الحضور نزل ارجو انه تملوا عيني بالنسبه عمليه الاختيار اي نيد تو بي كيرفول يعني شلون؟ يعني انا كواليتيتف وكل المشاركين مالتي يجوز ما يجازون 20 فاريد اختار هم بعنايه ليش انا اقول له بيربسز يعني انا عندي اعداد صياد الهوايه اختار من عندهم الموست اكسبيرينس ان ذا فيلد يعني اختار الاشخاص اللي هم مشتغلين مستشفيات مثلا بايو سيميلا عندهم بالصيدليه بايو سيميلا لازم هو اكسبوز للبايو سيميلا والا انا ما اجيب واحد هو ما يعرف البايو سيميلا ولا صار في بايو سيميلا ولا سامع بايو سيميلا واسوي انترفيو على البايو سيميلا فحقيقة عملية الاختيار الكواليتيتيف ليش اقولها بيربسيف؟ لانه اني اريد الشخص اللي ينطيني ينطيني ريتش انفورميشن ينطيني اكسبيرينس مالته ما اريد يقول لي والله اني ما اعرف ويحكي لي حكي مال فيسبوك ويحكي لي حكي مال جوجل ويحكي لي حكي مال دكتور علي عزيز يعني سامع محاضرة من دكتور علي عزيز ويجي يرددها لا اني ما اريد هيك اني اريد هو مشتغل هو صار في بايو سيميلار هو منطب ايده هو شايف بيشنت، هو سائل بيشنت، سائل اطباء يعرف الانواع المتوفره بالصيدليه، يعرف الانواع المتوفره بالمدخل، يعرف الانواع المتوفره بالمستشفى، فمن اسئله عليه جاوبني. يعني احنا بدنا نواجه كميه، الكميه خاصه من الكواليتيف، الكواليتيف انا ما اقدر اقابل ياهو اللي اشوفه بطريقي. ليش؟ لان تايم كومينسيومينج علي، انا بالنسبه لي مثلا انا طالب ماستر، انا مرتبط باربع اشهر الى ست اشهر تايم اجمع ديتا. ما عندي وقت انا اسوي 20 انترفيو وفقط خمسه هم الاكسبرت انا صار في وقت وجهد ومسوي مواعيد وانا شهرين اركض والمشرف مالتي يركض ولا يريد البيبر الاولى والبيبر الاولى متاخره وانا مكيف دكتور كملت لك 20 انترفيو يجي الدكتور ضياء مثلا او دكتور بسمه باوع حسن حسن وين انترفيو مالتك؟ والله الدكتور كملت 20 تباوع عليهم 15 من عندهم كاتبين يس نو اجري ديس اجري قال له حسن هاي شنو؟ شنو ديس اجري؟ شنو اجري؟ وين الحكي؟ قال له دكتور والله هو هذا اللي كتبه 
يا حسن قبل شوي سالني يقول لي سر هم يملوها اذا هم يملوها ويعطوني ديتيلز بيها يكتبون يعني اجابات سطر وسطرين وثلاثه خلي يملوها بس مو يملي ليها اجري ديس اجري يس نو انا شو اسوي بيس نو انا شو عندي سيرفي تجي دكتوره بس ما تنصدم حسن جايب لها اجوبه يس او نو يا با شنو يس او نو انا كواليتيتيف انا اريد حكي انا اريد تكست انا اريد كود انا اريد اكسبلينيشن يس او نو شو اسوي بيها وين اليس او نو وين اوديها بالكواليتيف فرجاء طلابنا يعني مو تروح لي على واحد اسمه صيدلي واقف في الصيدلي ما يعرف ما عندك اكسبيرينس يجايبك عليه غير اول سؤال تساله عندك خبره بهذا الموضوع عندك خبره كمل وياه ما عندك خبره شكرا اخذ من وقتك في مال لا مع السلامه اول سؤال ان كلوش كرايتيريا فدكتور غازي يعني احنا خاصه بالكواليتيتيف سؤالك جدا منطقي اعداد الصيادة الهوايه مو كلهم مشتغلين مو كلهم عندهم خبره اني بالنسبه لي كواليتيتيف اني اريد اعرف ان ديبث انفورميشن ان ديبث انفورميشن انا ما اروح على اي صيدلي بينما بس بالسرفي لا السرفي مثلا اي واحد مشتغل بالمستشفى لان هم عددهم كبير اذا انا اخلي انكلوجن كرايتيريا وانكلوجن كرايتيريا عدد السرفي اقل من ال... يعني مثلا بالانترفيو اريد ثلاث سنين فوق مثلا بالسرفي اريد سنه فوق بالكونفينيان سامبل بالسرفي بينما هنا انا بيرفسيف انا اجي على الصيدلاني الفلاني والطبيب الفلاني لان اعرفه هو دا يشتغل ويا بايو سيميلار اعرفه هو يصرف انفلكسيماب اعرفه يصرف مثلا غير بايو سيميلار او غيرها فرجاء طلابنا انت دير بالك قبل ما تروح استشير المشرف اساله دكتور شنو اللي نكلون كرايتيريا شنو الاكسكلوجن كرايتيريا؟ اني المن اروح؟ المن اخلي؟ ولذلك احنا يمنا بالفرع يمكن شفتوها طلابنا نناقش نناقش بروبوزل مال الطالب ونتعب عليه باللجنه العلميه ليش؟ لان يعني ما يريد ينزل للفيلد ويضيع له شهرين وثلاثه وبعدين يطلع عنده ميسنج ديتا احنا نساعده ونشد عليه ونشدد عليه باللجنه العلميه ليش؟ عبد ما ينزل ويضيع وقته وهو عنده نقص بعدين صعب بعدين ينقص يا جماعه بعدين يرجع عنده نقص زين انا ذول راحوا المرضى او راحوا المشاركين لا عندي تليفوناتهم لا اقدر اتصل بهم شلون المشرف يقول له ارجع يا بش ارجع انا تاخرت اريد انشر البيبر الاولى الوقت ده يمشي انا اريد امدد لو ما مد... يعني هاي الدلامه مال مال الطلاب الدراسات وقته قصير يريد ينشر بيبرين ويريد المشرف يتفاعل وياه ويريد فلازم يعني تكون افشنت تروح مباشره على الاشخاص اللي هم ينطوك الريتشنس بالانفورميشن ارجو ان اكون جاوبت على السؤال حسن شكرا جزيلا دكتور الميثودولوجي دائما هي المهمه ممنون لك لا انا وسهلا دكتورنا الغالي شكرا لك اعزائنا اذا ما سجلتوا حضور كلكم اذا عندكم اي سؤال اخر لو تحبون ننهي ان شاء الله اللقاء طبعا طبعا احنا احنا نستبعد الاشخاص اللي هم ما عندهم اكسبرت حسن ليش؟ لانه قلت لك انا ما اريدك تصرف وقت وتسوي ترانسكرايبنج وتسوي اوديو ريكوردنج وتسوي رايتنج وتترجم وتحول عربي وتحول انجليزي وبالاخير الكلمه كلها ما عندي خبره اي اي ديس اجري اي اجري يا بي اجري شنو هي؟ هي اوبن هي اوبن اندد كويشن هي مال اجري مو مال اجري هي لازم يحكي احنا نريد جيف اس مور ديتيلز احنا نحكي بالكواليتيف نحكي نقول له جيف اس مور ديتيلز يور اكسبيرينس بليز ليت اس جيف اس سم اوف يور اكسبيرينس يعني احنا نريد يحكي احنا ما نريد يقول ديس اجري واجري اذا ديس اجري واجري اسوي سيرفي فرجاء طلابنا يعني هي الكواليتيف لازم تكون ريتش مو تجي الاكسل شيت فارغه كلها اجري وديس اجري ونو ويس ما انا ما اريد أوب... أه... كلوز اندد اريد اوبن اندد اريد ريتش يحكي لي خبرته والله انا صار لي ثلاث سنين اصرف الانفلكس ماب والانفلكس ماب يخبر وسيف بس شنو غالي ومو على طول متوفر هذا ريتشنس ريتشنس هذا هذا اللي انا يعني ادور عليه كباحث يعني حكايه واحده راح تطلع لي ثلاث اجابات سيف وافكتيف بات نوت افيلبل حلو جميل رائع انا ادور على هاي الاجابات مثلا 
ما ادور على اي لايك ات اي دونت لايك ات اي لايك ات هي ما لايك ات مو ما لايك ات هي ليش لايك ات سائل مرضاك توك فيدباك عليه ليش من يقول لك اي لايك ات ليش لايك ات ليش لايك ات انت تدري بي يشتغل بي ادفيرز ريكريكشنز خطيره المرضى يعانون من عنده يعني مو يقول لك لايك ات ودس لايك ات قول له واي فولو اب فيطلع عندك اجابه حقيقيه ريتش ان ديبث هي فكره الكواليتيف هي ان ديبث ارجو انكم ما طولنا عليكم اذا ماكو اي اسئله اخرى نحب نشكركم جميعا وشكر موصول اكيد لعماده الكليه الدكتور سرمت والدكتوره سليمه السبورت مثل ما شفتوه بالزوم وبالورقه الحضور وكل شيء والدكتوره زهراء سيل ايضا بالتعليم المستمر وكان وياكم الدكتور علي عزيز من كليه الصيدله جامعه بغداد فرع الصيدله السريريه وان شاء الله نلتقيكم في ويبينارات قادمه شكرا لحضوركم مره اخرى و